would think that D&D is a naturally character-driven story type game. After all, the whole story is about the player characters, about focusing on them, following their actions, and causing consequences to their actions. A typical game of D&D revolves the dungeon master setting the scene, the players saying what they want to do with the scene, and then the dungeon master informing of the consequences. Rinse and repeat over and over with monsters, with social encounters, and with dice rolling, and you have yourself a game of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Now I understand that that is honestly a very, very simplistic view of the game, but it is typically how the game goes. So why is it actually difficult for a lot of people to tell a story-driven Dungeons & Dragons game, or even any type of TTRPG? It's for one simple reason, it's really difficult to understand people sometimes. When you look at a player character, you understand in your head that it's not actually a person. It is a character that a friend at the table is playing. And so in this case, when you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your characters, you're trying to assume and think of them as a character, a character in a story. But the thing about character-driven stories is those stories are driven by the characters by treating them like real people, by assuming that their actions are real, by assuming that the consequences that will happen to them are real and they will react to those consequences in a realistic way. And in some ways, in tabletop games, it's actually easier to do this because there's one person focusing on every single character at the table. Unlike a story where you're writing a book and you have to focus on every single character, figure out the motivations, the wants, the needs, the realistic consequences for every single character, it can become incredibly difficult to keep that all underneath and contained. However, when you have one person focusing on every single character in the story, it becomes easier. And yet there's still one problem in the way. The dungeon master. See, when you're telling the story at a table for a tabletop game, the dungeon master can be the number one thing in the way of telling a complex and interesting story because the dungeon master has to understand what the player characters are wanting to do in the story while also understanding what the players want out of the story. And that can be really difficult. You have to be able to understand your players and know them on a deeper level. For example, say I'm playing a fighter, a fighter who's incredibly egotistical and believes they can win every single fight they ever go into. They are so confident in their abilities that they will constantly go into every single fight, bold, brave, and brash. More like belongs in the trash. <laughs> they want to take on everybody because they are the greatest warrior that has ever existed in the world. Fuck Sakami. Basically God. But I'm still here. Yeah. Do you really believe your own hype that much? I am the hype! Now, the dungeon master may look at that and say, hey, this player really wants their fighter to be really strong. And so they let the fighter constantly win fights. Yes, sometimes it's close. Yes, sometimes it's a scrap, but the fighter always wins. The dungeon master makes sure of it. This is not what the player may actually want. If I was playing that warrior, yes, I'd be playing them bold and brash, but for the sake of, I want them to be humble. I want them to understand what's going on. I want them to learn Learn their lesson. But the DM keeps giving this character win after win after win and they can never lose and now they're only becoming more and more egotistical and me as a player I'm getting a little irritated because I want to tell a certain type of story but the dungeon master understands what the character wants but he doesn't understand what the player wants and that's where it gets incredibly difficult. Now whenever I talk about these types of topics there's always one thing that is typically the best tool of solving this. It's a session zero. A session zero is always necessary to really understand what your players want out of a game. That way you can ask the players, hey, what does your character want? What do you want? What's your ultimate fantasy for this character? What do you want to get out of this game? Understanding the player's wants from the game is the number one job of the dungeon master, in my humble opinion. I'm sure there are people that will argue with that and that's totally okay, but from my perspective, that is what DMing is. It's knowing what your players want out of the game and giving it to them in a fascinating tale and being able to give just enough of a twist on it to keep them on their toes. Now with that being said, session zero is great for that, but session zero happens at the beginning of the game, as its name implies. And once you hit session one, session two, session three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and beyond, you start to realize sometimes your players may not have actually wanted what they communicated in session zero. People's opinions change, and as the story progresses, so too do the characters, but so do the players. And so you have to understand what it is that they're wanting to get out of the game, which can become difficult, especially when even the player doesn't know. Say I am that player that I was talking about earlier, the one who wants the fighter to learn their lesson. And so the fighter does learn their lesson. And then in the next combat, they learn it again, and again, and again, until we get to the point where we're in session six and my fighter is in the dragon's mouth and I, as a player, am sitting here going, I would love to win a fight. I get that this is what I communicated to the DM. I wanted him to learn his lesson, but this is no longer fun. I feel like he might've learned some of his lesson, but he's still just getting beat up and beat up and beat up. When do I get to get to the last part of my character arc where I start to rise above? 
how do we get to that point? And so, while the Dungeon Master is doing exactly what you've communicated, as a player, it is now your job to communicate with the Dungeon Master, hey, I'm noticing this trend and I know that you're trying to achieve the same goal that I asked you about. But now I believe the character has begun to progress. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with what either party has done here. The DM has done what you've asked, you've acknowledged that they've done what you've asked, and now it's time to communicate to the next step. Now this does not mean telling the Dungeon Master, let me win all the fights from now on. Let me constantly succeed. That's not what D&D is about. That's why we have dice so we can fail. Without failure, the game is just not as exciting. However, if you take this into account of explaining to the DM, here's where I think the character is. Here's where I would like them to go. But you as the storyteller, I trust to make that interesting. And that's where we go back to what I talked about earlier about the DM's job being to understand what the players want, giving it to them, but adding enough of a twist to make it interesting. And so we continue with this example of this fighter, this fighter who has been beaten down, beaten down, beaten down to the point where they no longer actually have confidence in themselves. They are broken. And now the DM could just toss a fight at them that the fighter would win, but all that would do would confirm to the fighter that they had gotten either unlucky or lucky till this point. The point is it wasn't their skill that was the factor there. And that might be incredibly disheartening to the fighter. And so instead, the DM offers something else, a new mentor NPC who can teach the fighter a new type of fighting style. And once they level up and they take that new fighting style, now the DM can throw encounters that are not made to instantly be won. That's not the point, but encounters where they know the fighter can shine. Yes, the fighter is very good at dealing single target damage, but up until this point, it has just been constant hordes of enemies. And so the DM throws out a dragon, one target one target to fight. And so this fighter with Sentinel and a new type of fighting style goes up against the dragon and they don't have to kill the dragon. They don't have to beat it. The simple fact is they get to do what they're good at. They get to shine and the player gets to feel like that character has progressed forward. And that's the main point of everything that I'm saying. You want the player to feel like the character's decisions have impacted the story in an interesting way. And in order to do that, you have to understand what the player wants and give it to them without it seeming too contrived, without it seeming too easy, without it seeming like the dice didn't matter. Because that's what makes D&D exciting. Improvisation and chance, and the ability to create a story with a bunch of other people. And if you take out any of those factors, no longer is this tabletop game nearly as exciting. And this goes for all tabletop games. I know I talk about D&D on my channel, I totally get that, but D&D is just a broad term for tabletop games in most of my videos, because there are so many different types of systems out there that work exactly with this advice. Across all tabletop systems, the blanket advice of know what your players want and give it to them in an interesting way is correct because that's what you're sitting at the table to do. Everybody wants to tell that story together. So you have to understand the player's wants. You have to give them an obstacle to get over to get to that want and then you provide it to them in a satisfying way. One that allows the dice to choose it. And sometimes you may present that moment and the dice don't allow it and the character just fails. That is something that can happen. And in those cases, as a DM, I strongly encourage you to employ the technique of failing forward. Allow them to achieve what they've done, allow them to achieve what they're trying to do, but at a significant cost. Many times when a player fails a dice roll, I will often look at them and say, I will allow you to succeed, but because you failed the roll, something must be given up and I will give them a choice. Sometimes it is giving up a portion of their life force. Sometimes it's giving up a limb. Sometimes it's giving up a simple moral battle. I've had players in my campaigns who have played characters who desire not to kill. And so in those moments, I will let them defeat the enemy that's going to harm their party, but they have to kill it in order to do it. There must be a sacrifice that makes it worth it. The dice have to have impact on the story because the characters need to drive the story and the dice are the modem which the characters can use to impact the story. So use those all together and you can create a fascinating narrative that everyone will be happy with. A huge thank you to the YouTube members without which this video wouldn't have been possible. An extra special shout out to BKBW, Corey Wood, Big D the Cool Guy, Ace Pizza Guy 22, Stormsaw, Emily Mares, and Agile Monk for subscribing at the Roll Slayer tier.